can hear the voices of the hungry hearts crying out for love. One touch when you're this hungry, when you're this thirsty, one touch changes your life forever. Love has conquered every fear, broke down each wall. There are so many notches in that key to break through. I've made duplicates of the key, and I will give them to anyone who will take one. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Such as I have, give I thee the key to break through. I'm going to focus in on this. I'm going to fast for this. I'm going to pray for this. I'm going to worship for this. I'm going to be in the house of God every night for this. I'm going to press in. I'm going to hunger. I'm going to thirst. I'm going to get desperate. I'm going to get in every line. I'm going to put my feet on the blue line for this one day. More of you. Less of me until it's all of you and none of me. Hallelujah. What a night that if you can't see the cry of the lost out there and can't see why we're being raised up and why we have to get a hold of everything that is being laid on the table these weeks. This is so precious. We are not here by accident. We are here by divine appointment to receive everything that we need to reap the harvest of the nations. You know, this may be the first night in the last week and a half that I may be able to use some notes tonight. And what is on my heart is that first things must be first and that finances, money, is just a tool. You can't buy the buses or, or bring the people and rent the buses without the finances. You can't go to the nations without the finances. You can't buy a tent without the finances. You can't publish a book without the finances. You can't put a Bible in somebody's hand without the finances. You can't put gas in your car to go down the road and preach without the finances. It takes. It is just a tool, but we are here to receive the fire and to receive the anointing and to receive the call and to receive the passion and to receive the finances and to receive the wisdom and to receive it all. It's an entire package. And in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 34, I want us to look at that quickly. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We're already hearing about that tonight. We're hearing about that there will be people on that day that have nothing to show for anything. Not a soul, not an overcomer's crown, nothing on that day. But we, the people of God, will have laid up treasures in heaven. The people who have seen the picture, the people who have said, this isn't about my savings account. This isn't about my nice house. This isn't about my 401K. This was always about souls and seeing first things first. And on that day, we will never regret that we gave one too many offerings. We will never regret that we were stretched. We will never regret that we put off some things and some desires of some things we wanted because we put first things first. I remember hearing pastors say years ago, if you want to know where your heart is, check your check register. A lot of people have it backwards. They say, they say um, uh, that, that, uh, that my, my heart reflects where, where my treasure is, but no, all you got to do is look where your treasure is to find out where your heart is. You don't look at your heart to try to figure out your treasure. You look at your treasure and you can readily identify where your heart is. And so if you pick out your check register and you look at it, even if you use your debit card all the time, hopefully you keep track somewhere. And you look at it and ladies see shoes, 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 giving. Shoes, 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 giving. They, they know that their heart is in their shoes. And every time the guys get excited about that and get ready to say amen, I say, all you got to do is look, and if you see bow and arrow, four-wheeler, fishing boat, fishing rod, 
and golf equipment and then a little register for that says giving and then you see some more hunting equipment and some more sports equipment you know your heart is in your sports in your hobbies and so all we got to do is look when we start seeing giving 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 shoes giving 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 bow and arrow giving 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 golf giving 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 new curtains for the house we know that our heart is in the kingdom of God and that we have put first things first. It goes on to say the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and your own desires. You cannot serve God in this world system. You cannot serve God and get caught up in everything going on out here. You can't serve your own interests and reap the harvest. He says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought. Take no thought. How many have heard this expression around here ever? Heads are for thinking, but spirits are for drinking. Take no thought. If you get, every time you're stretched and every time the Holy Ghost says, come on, launch out in the water, I'm going to take you in deeper. I'm going to see if your total dependency is on me. I'm asking you to break open another alabaster box and do something you've never done before. Every single time, I guarantee your head will try to get in the way. Your head will say, what about tomorrow? What about next month? What about your family? What about the mortgage? What about this? Heads are for thinking, but spirits are for drinking. And every time I've been lost in the glory of God, lost in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, lost in joy unspeakable and full of glory, lost in the fire of the living God, God has asked me to do something that I just have to turn off my head and say, forget it. I'm just drinking tonight, and I'm just going anywhere he tells me to go. You know, I'm going to give you one illustration here. Pastor said the other night that he could listen to the stories all night. Well, here's one I don't believe he's heard that I've ever told here. A couple of people know it. But, uh, but you know, remember last week, for those of you who were here last week, and I told that story about going to Nome and holding a, a wonderful Holy Ghost revival and the pastor under the floor for three and a half hours. Well, when I went back... There one night we had this Holy Ghost service where the young people especially were all over the floor and they're vibrating under the power of God and they're weeping and they're laughing and joy unspeakable and they're in other tongues. And it got so hot in the church. How many know where it's cold outside? They many times have too much heat going on inside, too much furnace. And so they propped the back door open a little bit. And when they did, I didn't know it, but a high school dance had just let out. And as the people are getting out of the dance, they hear more noise coming from the Holy Ghost book of second, the second chapter of Acts service going on than was going on in the rock and roll dance. So the next thing I know at 11 o'clock at night, 40-some young people come in the back door, and they just come in, and they don't know anything about church protocol. They don't know they shouldn't interrupt anything, and they come all the way to the front, and they're stepping over bodies on the floor, and they're going, what is this? What is this? I, I go to school with him. Why is he laughing like that? I go to school with her. Why is she laughing like that? Can I have this? And in five minutes, I gave him a salvation message, and everybody was on the floor except one. You could tell he was wearing a leather jacket. He was an Inuit Eskimo young man, and he, he just, he, he's like, no, I'm not going to say the sinner's prayer. And when I said, I said, what is it you want? Because he's still standing there. The Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, he wants to taste and see if this is real. Back in my religious days, I would have said, that's not possible. You get born again first, then baptize in water, then baptize in the Holy Ghost. But oh no. I said, all right, come and taste. And as he did, he hit the floor and he rolled and he laughed and he cried. And I said, now will you accept the Lord? He said, no. And he went out the door, and I thought, what in the world? He was the first one to come running in the next night, full of just, it just couldn't wait. I've had 24 hours to think about a God who's that real. I want to give my life to him. And so he and 42 young people got radically saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, and all of them decided to go to Bible school. And um, 
And that's before this Bible school was, was formed. And the next thing I know, I come back and that young, tried to picture this Eskimo young man with this round brown face. And I had left all of Pastor's, Pastor Rodney's material that I had at that time. I had left it all in that church. And I come back and that Eskimo young man is going, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he's walking like this. And they said they were calling him little Rodney. And uh, seeing a young Eskimo young man like that, I just, so when I, uh, then the pastor, he asked me, he said, Debbie, he said, uh, being in Assembly of God Church, he said, we're having a Western camp meeting, and I can't ask you to speak, but he said, we're bringing in the hierarchy from all over the state, the, uh, the assistant superintendent and people, and I want you to be here when they see the revival that has taken place in here. And you got to understand, they had all written letters about me. They said, we've never met this woman, and we've heard you've had good revivals, but remember, you really shouldn't have a non-AG person in the pulpits. They would show me the letters. And they said, the people who wrote the letters are going to be at this meeting. And they're going to see the river of God flowing. And I want you just to take a back seat and watch it all. So I did. And I'm telling you, the river of God was from the front to the back. And the next thing I know, the assistant superintendent stood up weeping. And he said, young lady, I understand you're here. The one who came in here and preached and, and brought this revival by the Holy Ghost. He said, on behalf of the Assemblies of God of Alaska, I want to ask you to forgive us of what we have done and the letters we have written. And we're always a little skeptical of, of uh, independence. But we are here and we are witnessing this river of God. And he said, I want to meet with you afterwards. And I got in the back room and he said, would you like to credential with us? And I was in so much shock, and I immediately got so drunk on the Holy Ghost, not that I was going to cr credential with them. I did visit their office in Anchorage. I was a little curious. But when the, when, when the actual superintendent at that time showed me an article written against Pastor Rodney about the Holy Ghost bartender and asked me what I thought of it, I said, I think I'm wasting your time, sir, and my time. Thank you for the appointment, but I'll just go on the way I am. And he said, I thought you might say that. But anyway... What I want to get back to is the night that they said, we want, you to, we want to ask you to forgive us. I got so drunk in the Holy Ghost that night to watch what God was doing in spite of how much people fight you and how much it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do when you are full of the Holy Ghost. Like pastor saying tonight, you carry it with you anywhere. That was a church I was not even invited to go to, just showed up. And now the whole denomination is asking you to forgive them. And it's spreading all over the whole state of Alaska. And when I got so drunk in the Holy Ghost that night, here's what happened. I haven't ever had anything happen quite like it before or since. But the pastor had invited me to stay in an apartment. He, in fact, he had brought missionaries from everywhere for that, for that uh, camp meeting. And, um, and there were like about four apartments or maybe five or six apartment buildings that were identical to each other. Identical. And the front was identical to the back. I mean, the, the front had a porch, the back had a porch. And we knew ours was like the third from the left, and we knew it was on the right side, and we knew all that. But now we're getting home at 3 a.m., drunk on the Holy Ghost. Myself and an older lady that was a prayer warrior that I always took with me, she was part Native American. And so every night they had brought us to the front. But we were drunk in the Holy Ghost that night, and they had a different guy drive us home. I didn't realize he drove us up the back way. And so we're facing the back instead of the front, and these apartment buildings are identical. And the front and the back are just alike. And so we go to put our key in the door, and as we did, as we did, uh, a native man, a big man, a stomach out to here, he opens the door and just backs up and just gets out of the way, like, come on in. And I thought, wow, I haven't met him before, but every night that we come home, there's a different group of people in here because Native people have a tendency to invite all their friends, all their relatives. I thought, wow, he's a new one I've never met either, but all right. And uh, so my friend, her name was Jean, Jean Thomas. She and I go in, and remember, these are all identical inside as well. And I said, wow, when I left tonight, the place was picked up. It's a total mess. 
in jeans. She's a clean freak. She said, I'm just going to start cleaning. She goes and gets a broom and starts cleaning. She's picking up newspapers. She's, she's, she found a pair of bedroom slippers. She said they, they really should go over in another room, and I think I'll start doing dishes. And, and I thought, well, clean away, Jean. I'm drunk on the Holy Ghost. I'm just going to sit and enjoy. And it's only this big native man sitting across from me with his hands on his belly just staring at me. He won't say a word for some reason. And, uh, and so I keep looking at him. He keeps looking at me. And I said, awesome meeting tonight. He didn't say anything. I said, I don't even remember seeing you there. He said, he still didn't say anything. And I sat there for quite a while, and I'm just talking about the good things of God, and I'm laughing, and I'm crying, and he's just sitting there like this. And that can be a, a, a fairly common native expression, just to sit and just stare at you. And I thought, my goodness, we've been doing this now for 25 minutes. I'm getting uncomfortable. And so I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to go on up to bed, sir. And uh, I start heading up the stairs. And a lady comes down that I haven't met either in a bathrobe. And her hair is in a towel. And, and, and I thought, man, I haven't met her either. This is, this, uh, they've got a whole group here tonight I've never met. And... Uh, and so I've reached the top of the stairs, and I'm just getting ready to head into the bedroom. And as I do, the native man downstairs says the first thing he had said in the last half hour, he says, you sure you got the right house? And when he said that, I had a revelation among revelations that, oh, my goodness, and I ran down those steps. I was laughing and crying so hard. I almost missed the steps. And my friend's still cleaning. I went, Gene, you're cleaning the wrong house. Come on out. And uh, as, as, as we got outside, it is below zero in Nome, Alaska. And I'm in, only I would be in high heels in the snow. And it's, it's now like 3.30 a.m. And we don't even know which house is ours. And, and we, are, we are laughing and crying, and I slide in the snow and hit the ground. She tries to pull me up, and then she slides and hits the ground. And then I, I get up again, and pretty soon lights are coming on in all these apartment buildings. And somebody's hollering out, what's wrong with you two ladies? Are you drunk? And, and, and from the ground, I'm yelling, yes, but not as you suppose, seeing it as but the third hour of the day. But this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last days said, God and the next thing I know it, all the lights are coming on everywhere and I said to Jean you have any idea where we go which one of these places is ours we must be around the back instead of the front and so instead of the third from the left it would be the eh, somebody else brought us home tonight well by the time we got to the church the next night all of Nome had heard about the two drunk ladies that were in the wrong house cleaning house and uh the next thing we know, people came in from all over, including the, you sure you got the right house? Because I had sat there just, just talking about the goodness of God all night. Now, obviously, obviously, we don't operate that way all the time. But I tell you what, there is a time that you just got to turn off your head. And the more you live that way in a meeting, the more in, anything God asks you to do, by that stranger over there, don't go in their house, but by that stranger over there, a new suit of clothes, go buy that lady a dress, go pay for those people's uh, groceries in the grocery store. But when you have lived that way, turning off your head, but listening closely with the spirit of the living God, you are ready to obey instantly whatever he asks, because finances are only a tool. You can't serve your own interests. So take no thought, stay drunk in the Holy Ghost. It says, no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? 
Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? I grew up in Pentecost hearing this scripture manipulated by religious minds that would say, 